Hello and welcome. My name is Neil Oates. This is the ninth episode of our tutorial series where that I've coined base in the book. This is where I'll be crafting some nice blueprints and providing them to you while I'm walking through sort of the designs of how I'm building it. Well, the worst, the next part we're working on is military science. I guess you know that since you click the episode and you know that it says military science. Let's have a look at it because military science, there are two things to note here. While the red and green signs that we have created are pretty simple, this is where it starts scaling up. Gazing rounds, grenades, gun turrets. These three are rather complicated recipes to craft and they need to be crafted. The <clears throat> it is also, however, useful things because you're going to need the piercing rounds, the grenades and the gun turrets in order for you to start fighting back in the biters. So it is a pretty cool that they are forcing us to craft something that we need to use anyway. The other thing to note is it takes 10 seconds, but it does create two military science packs. So I'm designing these uh, setups for two science packs per round per second, normalized. And by more normalized, I mean, that's what it says up here. I know that this machine is only 0.75, but I'm not taking that into it. So I'm still calling it two, round, two per second. Anyway, that means I need 10 of these machines to craft science packs. And that's what we are going to design for. The first thing that we want to build is actually using our blueprint. I will be crafting. Or hold on, let's uh, build that one again so we can show here. So in order for me to have, if I have 10 of these running, so I generate two military science packs, that means quite simply that I need to create two signs that generate one piercing round per second, one grenade per second, one gun turret per second. Very simple. So that's the designs I'm working on. Let's have a look at first the, the piercing ammo. Try to align it to the other ones just to, out of out of niceness. Crisp designing here. There we go. Right, so let's have a look. We are needing piercing rounds. They take one firearms magazine, one steel plate per three seconds. So in order for me to craft one per second, I need three of these. Luckily, that switch with one my one. Normal ammo can produce one per second. So this one can produce one per second. These are consuming one per three seconds. So that's evens out one to three. That fits. So I need to bring iron in. I need to bring steel in. And I need to bring copper in. You can also see here, it actually takes quite a bit of copper. So I need a dedicated lane for the copper. That's what we have here. Now I'm using a trick that I think is, is pretty cool. And is it's actually sharing a belt here. And let me just illustrate what's going on. So I'm taking this only on the inside. And that means this guy can take it. It also means that when I'm in exporting, let's take the iron up as well. Let's have a look. And then it produces there. It uses the outer lane. And that means I can use this lane for two things, both the steel and the firearms. And I can do that because it's only this is only using one of each per second per three seconds. So that's not really an issue. This is one single red insert I can easily keep up. I can say now this is what I need to produce one per second for the military science. However, I strongly recommend to produce more. Ah, right. I was like, why is there nothing building? And it's because I haven't activated this one. Like, what? All right. So what I would like, would propose that you set up is some kind of chest, depending on what your, your personal preference. And just basically put something in a box. Oops. I'll just place this here. And for the sake of it, just limit it. Remember to limit it. But this means when biters are coming or when you need to go out, you just go back and click this one. However, if you want to do this, you can see here nothing gets by until this is full. And then when you pick it up, that means your military science will standing still. Also, as you progress towards the base, you are going to be facing more, more biters. So my recommendation is, this is not particular for the science, but more in terms of what you can build and can support on one line is this. I mean, if once the military science is operational, once this box is full, these machines will just grind to a halt. This is the maximum you can support. It is actually limiting on the copper in this case. 
So that's uh, what you can support. The yellow belt is transporting 13 and a third item per second. Each of these is taking five per three seconds. That is for this section here, it's taking five per, per second. And that's 15 per second, which is more than a yellow belt. Yellow belt, however, it's remember it's 0.75 crafting speed. Of course, you can clean up this part afterwards. So it doesn't take up that part, right? The funny thing is, this part you can actually take all the way down here. But I wanted to include it into the blueprint because exactly for this reason, you wanted to make it modular. Now that's the first part. I realize this episode may be a bit long, but there are several things that must be crafted there. The next thing we want to craft is, let's try and align it so it hits the same way. This is the grenades. Grenades are also useful when heading out. But in terms of crafting, they are extremely simple. Just have, let's just have a look at it. It is five iron plates and 10 coal, but it takes eight seconds. So it's really, it does take a lot of materials, but in order for this, it looks like a lot, but it's actually only about one coal per second. So this is definitely enough. You could also combine it on one belt if you feel so inclined. Again, my recommendation is put it in a box. This one, I don't really bother crafting more, more than what is strictly needed. I don't care if I use it so rarely that it's not really a big deal. And what I am doing here, mm, what I'm doing here is actually I'm making it on both sides of the belt. I don't think that's actually necessary. Ah, it's just a silly little mistake. So I actually need, only need it on one side of the belt. I don't need it to fill up both sides of the belt. And this is deliberate here that I only want to keep it on one side of the belt as well. Now that's the two first ones, easy to craft. I don't bother creating this one bigger. And the next one is actually a lot more complicated and it is also a bit more tricky. So let's start by placing it and then while it's being placed, let's have a look at it. Gun turrets take an inordinate amount of iron. It takes 40 iron per eight seconds. And that's too much, 40 iron per eight seconds. If I want to craft one per second, it's just not able to keep up. And the reason why that means in order to support this, I need both a red belt and a yellow belt. So basically that corresponds to a blue belt coming in 40, 40 per second just to feed all, all of this. It is quite crazy. And this is what's really going to put a drain on your base, these gun turrets. So remember, build it the right size and then expect that it'll draw. So when you have, when you're researching military, you expect that it'll put a huge drain on your resources. And the way I've been doing it here is not exactly to scale, but it works really well. So this one takes 10 iron gears per eight seconds. Well, one, if I take one machine per, I mean, one gear machine per one gun turret machine, that can, that'll overproduce. That means it's idle most of the time because this can in eight seconds produce 16. However, in, if I have one feeding two, that means in eight seconds, the cycle time for the gun turret, I can only produce 16. I can only produce 16 gear wheels if it's fully saturated. That means these will be a bit idle. And actually I prefer that way. And in order for them to be a bit idle, that means these can at maximum, instead of producing one per eight seconds, they can produce one per 10 seconds. So that keep that in mind, if I do this, this will then be the bottleneck, the gear wheels will be the bottleneck for these two. And that means they're red, realistic, Build time is now longer eight seconds, but it's 10 seconds. So I just pretend that it says 10 seconds and then be done with it. That is also the reason why I have, let's just grab a random blueprint here. There, I have 10. That means these 10 will produce one per second. And the way I'm, I'm doing this here, I'm taking one red belt in and one yellow belt. You could also take two red belts, but I just want to, don't want to skip it up. You could take two yeah, the three yellow belts in as well. That's also the same. But then again, then you have to build it here. What I'm doing here is making sure that this red belt is being drawn on by both. So there is a slight chance that for whatever reason, the gears have to pick up, pick up this. And that means this belt will be full because these can't, uh, the gun turrets cannot pick from that belt. At least not the way I've set it up. And so therefore I mix it in between just to make sure. So let's hook it up without the more here that one 
one has to be hooked up with red belts and then let's have a look at it when it goes down this one i also recommend that you store some not a lot but some remember to cap it did i do that here yes i did here i'll just store it to one buck because that's too much you know what i'll actually go so far as to say yeah just pretend that i've already crafted some because i don't want this getting stuck now that's all of our prerequisites for the military science that means basically the stockpiles when you're not researching military science same with the grenades and i think that's fine how far are we doing here this is yeah it's actually almost i'd like to have 200 that's two stacks now the last part which is actually the whole point of what we wanted to build is the military science now we have the inputs and therefore we craft it now there are a couple of things I want to illustrate here. I'm going to use the same trick to recycle a belt because I have three inputs and they're not used in very high demand. That means I actually need to... Uh, here, I'll take these two in. What is also kind of important, these guys are very valuable. They cost a lot of money, a lot of materials. So you don't want to drag them like on the bus and over and under. This should be produced quite close to where you're working. So, and... While the guns, uh, these are the cheapest, so you, they can be produced furthest away. That's kind of my take on it. So I'm just filtering this over here. And you know what, it's actually, let's make it a bit nicer. And then I'm merging it in so that they go on each side of the lane and then they can be picked up here now the next one here i'll simply just drag this one on i know some argue that you always want to maximize the distance the underground belts take but i'm not a proponent of that i like this one because it's very clear what it does when you just have long underground belts then it's not as clear so here I have completely overscaled my um, my AP rounds. That means this was going to be a full belt. While these ones are perfect, perfectly scaled here, and this one is also full. Yes. So everything that's produced will move on. Now you can see here what happens. This one is picking up, and then it is outputting on the outside. So let's go up to the end and see how I solve that. Basically, what I do is I do this trick. And this is an underground belt. It's half of an underground belt even. But it's it's an underground belt that is placed like this. But the way it works is that if I have materials coming in here. I mean also materials coming in here. Let's actually just illustrate how it works. If I have some materials here. If they are on the upper side of the belt. They get bumped. If they are on the lower side of the belt. They move in. Similarly here, if they're on the lower side of the belt, they get stuck. If they're on the upper side of the belt, they move in. That is a pretty neat trick that can be abused sometimes. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm basically just using an underground belt to filter it. And this one can go up or wherever it, we have it for our, uh, for our research labs. So that's uh, bas the basic way I, I would build it. I think this is pretty crisp way of, of making it work. Uh, it'll produce quite a lot, quite fast. Two per second, that's definitely enough. It'll, However, it will consume a lot of iron. You can see here, I have four iron lines in. It'll basically consume two and a half red belt. So expect your base to be quite strained if you really scale up here and, and make sure that you have the iron to support it. Now, I did also include one extra blueprint. This is more of a, a modular thing. I'll just demonstrate it, but that's just, this is a, uh, hook it up this is a, another way of doing it which is basically saying instead of crafting all of that crap here with uh, grenades that you may not use and gun turrets that you may not use then let's just build it direct insertion so in this case we have all coming in here we have this one is an iron line and that's an iron line so again i have two red iron lines that's what i need to support all of this and uh, let's see if i can Kind of illustrate what's in each line.
Oh, stupid robot. I'm gonna pick you up. Yeah, don't take it. That was actually kind of silly. I didn't need it, but that was fun. And let's see. Uh, there. Iron. This one will be copper. This one is... That's the output. And that one was... Ah, the ammo. So that I still want to produce separately. But if you don't need, for example, if you don't need any um, any grenades or any gun turrets, this is maybe an easier way. It doesn't take as much space. This is still, in this case, remember, this is the constraint. So this will only produce one per 10 seconds, one per 10. And therefore this, this actually works quite well because it's 10 seconds then. But it doesn't matter if this one is producing every eight seconds because it's going to be constrained here with direct insertion. Sorry, I just noticed that that's that one. It has to be there. So this is a pretty uh, compact build as well. This is also a possibility to use that. Um, I I do prefer this one, uh, honestly. But it's it's an option. It's also provided. So, and the idea of, of this one is that you just tag it on after each other and it will this will support it so keep that in mind okay that's it for now this was a bit long but it's also a rather complex one to build so uh, let's leave it at that thank you very much for for watching if you like it leave a like leave a comment and of course uh, subscribe if you are interested in more content like this and thank you